there's another problem. So YouTube, I was in Paris a month and a half ago, and the kids, the terrorists who went into Charlie Hebdo and killed 17 people, where did they learn about Anwar al-Awlaki, who was the person that they swore allegiance to? They all got him through YouTube videos. There are 8,000 Anwar al-Awlaki videos on YouTube. And there's 7,000 ISIS videos on YouTube. And by the way, Google is willing to sell advertising on Procter & Gamble against an ISIS video. Now, I'm sure Procter & Gamble is not too thrilled to be selling Swiffer or whatever toilet paper against an ISIS video. But that point is that Google doesn't really care. They're just selling advertising. And they'll sell it against anything. Now, you know, so I've asked them, well, you have these really sophisticated audio tools that people like Albi and his company at Sony can use to search YouTube and find copyrighted content and then ask for it to be taken down. Google also gives you the opportunity to, quote, monetize that track if, if, you, if you're too bored to get it taken down and maybe you can get some money against it. But they never think of actually using those same tools on the upload side. In other words, if they have an audio signature of every single movie, or every single song, that same tool could be used when someone is uploading that movie to stop it before it ever got on the thing. But that's not Google's idea. They want to create a whack-a-mole system where it's so hard for you to get things off. And by the way, they can sell the inventory. So Nils Gilman, who is the Associate Chancellor of Berkeley, says the basic problem in our society is what he calls a twin insurgency. From below comes a series of interconnected criminal insurgencies that root around states and seek ways to empower and enrich themselves in the shadows of the global economy. From above comes the plutocratic insurgency, the Peter Thiels of the world, in which globalized elite seek to disengage from traditional obligations and responsibilities. That's what the libertarians believe. They have no responsibility whatsoever to the society. So we all see, saw what from below looks like Sony, right? You have a criminal insurgency, or maybe it's a state, who knows, can hack and bring a $50 billion corporation to its knees. And now we're all rushing to create the Internet of Things, which will only make us more vulnerable because like every tech project, we make it first and then we figure out the security side of it second. And 60 Minutes ran a very interesting episode six weeks ago in which they showed that every single connected car your Lexus can be hacked and they can then, someone can take over the braking, the steering, everything, and run your car into a wall if they wanted to. And that's just one example. So your toaster is going to be connected, but that's the way into your house. And then once they're in your house, who knows? And then we have from above, and the libertarians are convinced that they are going to dominate. So the Koch brothers who finance Cato and finance most of the libertarian things, have said that they're going to give $900 million next year to ensure that their point of view in the world is succeeding in the election. In the meantime, Google spends more money lobbying in Washington. So when the Attorney General of Mississippi actually asked them to turn over some of their uh, materials on why they're, you know, rooting people to criminal enterprises. They sued him and they came down on so hard that he, he had to turn away. Now, you may say, well, it's a bunch of musicians or filmmakers or journalists. Why is this important? 